Um, again, Slack channel, it's absolutely buzzing. There's a lot of work getting done. Um, and a couple, let me just remind myself who. Um, Wallace has done some for the voting classifiers. Um, Damien. Sonia you, is also working on. Yeah, and, and stacking as well. Um, Dam, Damir also uh, mentioned earlier in the channel that he would be working on. I'm also working on it. I just uh, finished a notebook just just a few minutes ago. Cool. Do you want to share that and, and, and show us? Yeah, I will just uh, show you my results. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're not uh, very promising right now, but I have a couple of points that I can share with. Um, I'm uh, not able to share my screen. Hello? Give me one second. Let me share. Oh, okay. that. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I thought it's sick there. Uh, yeah, so you guys can see my screen, right? Yep. So I, this is, um, I tried implementing two, I tried two, uh, two different uh, experiments on voting classifier. So for this one, I tried uh, XGBoost scan and Naive base and multi-layer perceptron um, and accuracy and f1 score are reasonable but uh, the results are not very promising then i tried um training another voting classifier and this time i used xgboost knn and instead of naive base i i tried logistic regression and for this one, the results were pretty good compared to this one. So the, the false uh, positives in this one is 132. And in this case, it's just 98. So uh, this one is, this combination is working out a little better for now. But like I said, I just prepared this notebook or like 30, 40 minutes ago. So, um, I will do a more experimentation on it and see where it goes from here. Uh, and yeah, there is nothing more uh, for me to share. Uh, I haven't done anything um, regarding the project during the past few days. So, yep, cool. No, it looks all right. That's the thing. It's it's not. You know, using stack and using voting classifiers and whatnot, it's not guaranteed to to improve on a single model. Um, it's just, you know, I mean, in ca in certain like Kaggle competitions and whatnot, it, it does seem to be um, really effective. But again, it's iterative. It depends on what kind of models you're using, you know, and then it's all the, the parameters, the hyperparameters and whatnot. So it, it, again, you could spend that, you know, weeks and weeks trying to perfect that. There's no real, um, you know, solid recipe. Of course, yeah, XG Boost. You know, that's like one. Of, that's more probably one of the best and most reliable. If you know, yeah, but other than that, it's you know how you spice that up with with you know you you sort of you know the classifiers or regressors or whatnot. Um, that's when you can fall down a rabbit hole. Um, and just keep, you know, trying to gain that one percent or you know, point of a percent. It's it's it it generally isn't worth it. Um, if it doesn't make a vast difference in, on your first iteration, but you know, it look it looks quite good, and it, it's part of the learning process. It's part of the experimentation as well, and it's something that um, it's not you know stacking and and voting classifiers. I wouldn't say that they're generally used a lot in industry. I certainly haven't come across them that much, um, only because they can be quite 
expensive computationally. And therefore, if you're, you know, running it through the cloud or whatnot, it, it, it's not really like the, co- the cost to benefit ratio isn't great. It's usually better if you, you know, you, you stick with your, your XG boost or whatever it is and, um, and, and, and just use a single model. Um, it, to, to, to get something like a, a stack and model um, into production, you'd probably you would need a very robust business case. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's just something to know about though. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough one really. Yeah. I, the main, the main issue is, um, the imbalance in the data set, um, especially in, in this project and the last project that we worked on. I, I have learned this lesson that imbalance data is is uh, very problematic. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, it is very problematic. Um, there, are, there are like uh, a lot of methods to deal with it, but nothing works. No, nothing works good on imbalance yeah, data. Set. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Like synthetic data, you know, doesn't really quite cut it. Although you know, there's plenty of research into them into that area, which is improving it overall. Um, augmentations mm, they do quite well, but it's not like a guarantee that it's going to improve anything. Um, I mean, in real life, you, the best thing to do is just collect more data, and that is yeah, pretty much that's it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. The, only, the only right way to approach Im- an imbalance data is to just collect more data for the minority. Class. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I um, mean, and, and in real life, you know, in industry, that's exactly what we do. If we had like a severe imbalance and, you know, when you're, you know, if you're using company resources and stuff, sometimes you just, you literally, it'll be cheaper to go out and find more data. S- say to the client, listen, um, you know, if, if, if we were working with a, a particular hospital or a health organization who sends us this data, you know, we can do all this augmentation, but we'd end up using company resources to build all these augmentators and, and, and you know, synthetic data sets and whatnot. It would be much easier and cheaper to go to the client and say, listen, you know, we need to balance this data set. Do you, you know, is there more data that you can get? Is there more data you can produce? Um, and that is, you know, 99.9% of the time, the best way to do it. Um as I say, we're not quite there yet with the synthetic data or the augmentations. They're not reliable enough, especially in the medical domain as well, where accuracy and and you know and, and precision of, of of your predictions affect people's lives. Um, you know, in a real life setting, I wouldn't. Ex- and if, if if I was like a, a a lead data scientist and you were my team, there's there's no way I would I would have you augmentating the data and whatnot. I'd simply get the client to send more data. Um, of, I mean, in terms of augmentation, yet yeah, we'd probably, you know, make the, the, the pitches a little bit better, like clip them down and, and, and do that, you know, feature mapping and whatever. I wouldn't, you know, try and make the, the, the minority class bigger by, you know, changing them around and whatever. I'd just go and get more data and we can balance it that way. Um, or at least get, you know, a, a, a lot more samples that'll make the training data a bit more, a bit more varied and versatile. So yeah, you know, but in in t- you know in, on Dean a project we don't have we we can't do that kind of thing because our data set is just what it is. It's a free data set on 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 a website, and we can't exactly, you know, the people who put that together ring them up and say give us more. You know what I mean? It's it's just one of them things. Um, so yeah, we we for for what we've done now it, and and what you guys have done, you know, we've explored multiple avenues, got some good solid results. There's still, you know, experimentation to go, and then we've got the the, the web app at the deploy and the deployments, which we, you know, always you've already started producing. So yeah, um, we're in a in a in a good um in a good position to be honest with you. Is 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 anyone else got any um anything you'd like to share with the group? Any experimentation that you've done or anything? Uh, hey, Rich. Uh, so yeah, I've been experimenting uh with the CNN that I was talking about. So, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So yeah, I was uh, 
uh, crime with the CNN model. Like I got stuck at, at that. So uh, with like I did the data augmentation, and for some reason, uh, my model like uh, I, like predicted everything him like the every cell as a healthy cell instead of uh, predicting as a error. So it was like uh, if I sh uh, share my screen, and show you. So like one of the model that I did was like I included extra layer in, in the model. So it was like predicting uh, almost like everything in the like a healthy cell. And with the ALL also, it was like predicting most of them as a uh, healthy cell instead of the ALL. So this is like, I was like confused like why it happened. So I'm trying another uh, technique now. So like, I'll, I'll be honest, like with the new technique, I'm using the help of a chat GPT. So I, I'm trying to uh, like, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying uh, my model to look into the cells, like look deeply into the cells. So what I'm trying here is uh, like it's currently training right now. So what I'm trying is like uh, creating the parallel branches and then using uh, like, so I asked chat GPT to like what what, uh, what method I can use uh, to uh, make my model look deeper into the cells. So it gave, it gave me like few of the like uh, methods uh, so one of them was a, a parallel branch, then there was a dilated pure convolution. So I'm trying uh, this right now at this moment. So just uh, waiting for this to complete. So I'll just see like how this will work. On this yep, event. cool. I'll see you've got some early stopping and whatnot there, yeah. Nice, okay. And it's been is that, is that where it's been training for 171 minutes so far? Yeah. yeah. And it's going so it's been just trained for like six back, you know, six if I'll get it's cool. taking a lot of like more around 22 minutes uh for for one minute of the pain. Yeah. Now you know what well, that's good work. It's good work. It it is you know, it, it can be a lot more difficult to, to create a custom model. But I like what you've done so far. Um, yeah, and, and the callbacks you've used, early stopping, and your checkpoints as well, they will help a lot in terms of training, especially if the if it doesn't fluctuate or not. Um, the data you're using, sorry, um, are you, what what data are you using? Are you just using it in batches or are you using the same batches that um, Team 1 have, have, have oh, laid out? Yeah. I was actually uh, supposed to work with the team one, but with the with my like a work, I was not able to. So cool. I just worked on so on the same, the data that you have provided. So in that, I'm cropping the uh, like I'm cropping the images and then I'm just uh, contrasting it. Yeah. So uh, let me see if I can show you what I have images. So I'm kind of cropping it and then contrasting it. That's what I'm doing right now. Perfect. With these so based on that, I'm uh, training it. So a uh, few things that I learned while working on the CNN, because like I wanted to try CNN. So this is my first time working on the CNN. So while Wait, working no on it, so I learned like how I can use the batch. Yeah. Uh, like how, so uh, this is, I guess I knew, I saw one of our, one of the teammates uh, notebook where he used the batch. So I, I'm trying that like, how to call the data within a batch. And then I also like explored what I can, like how I can uh, pre-process within a batch. So one of the videos I you know, watched on YouTube, so he was kind of doing that. So uh, I learned that like how I can do that. So it, you know, if you see like, it is just taking a few seconds to do all these things if I'm calling it within a batch. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. Like I tried for five, six different techniques. So like, a, uh, different structure of model, like same yeah. Model. I haven't tried any of the pre-trained or anything. It's just a, a normal one. That yeah, no, that's, that's cool. That's good. Yeah, it's good to see as well. Um, I, and I've I've put a notebook together. Um, it's on my personal computer. Though I should have jumped on the on the Zoom call there, but it's um, I've I've created a custom model, and it's not too far dissimilar from yours. Um, I'm getting quite decent results though, but I'm I'm we're still have, I'm still having this a, a, a sort of issue. Um, it's overfitting, uh, which Team One have also seen in terms you know even well on their feature extraction and whatnot. 
So, you know, it's something that I'd have to attend to. But I think, yeah, it's good that you've done that. And, you know, as long as you're learning something, you can demonstrate it. Um, is your notebook on the GitHub? Oh, I guess so. No, in st- starting uh, starting models should be on there, but uh, I don't think I have uploaded any new on that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Get, get them up there so I, I can I can take a look as well. Um, and I'll have to upload mine to and uh, have that as like a a baseline or whatnot. But yeah, that's that's really good good work, Baron. Spot on. Cheers. Um, what's in the chat? Pranjal, how much time do we have left in the challenge? Um, we've got about two weeks left. So, um. This week we were doing the sort of um, uh, stacking the voting classifiers and whatnot, um, and then the last part of it was going to be the deployments. And Always has already started doing that. Um, he's built a web app, um, and he just gave us a little demonstration last um, was it Saturday? Yep, Saturday, um, and it was really good. So after this week. Um, after Saturday, that's when the development for the web app is going to begin. Um, and it, the web app really should be to sort of sort of have two elements to it. The first one is is the predictive um, part of it, where you can put an image in and it gives a prediction. And the second part should be a sort of a rundown of the project. Um, a rundown of all the main contributors, what we did, how we did it, um, and a link to the GitHub and whatnot. And just, you know, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be a complete, you know, a massive 10 page thing, just a brief overview, a couple of uh, user profiles and whatnot. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're going to share in your portfolio. And it, it, it's nice to, to acknowledge the work you've put in and also acknowledge the, um, you know, the work of your t- the, the team around you as well. Um, and it'll help each other if you want to go and work in this particular industry or, um, and, and use it in within your applications and in your resumes and whatnot. So yeah, about two weeks left. Um, and the final, so we've got Saturday and we'll just round, we'll just conclude the voting classifying and the experimentation part. And then the following Saturday, we'll demonstrate the um, the web application. And then the Saturday after that is when everything is fine-tuned and finished, ready for the final presentation. And then the final presentation is basically, um, you know, it, it, it's a meeting that can be up to about two hours long where if, you know, Every member has the opportunity to speak at the meeting about what they've learned, how they found the project, um, you know, what was the easiest part of it, what was the most difficult part of it, and um, and that's it, pretty much it, really, and just uh, a demonstration of their work that they've contributed over the last couple of weeks, um, and that's the conclusion, and then from that point, I put together a final presentation for Omdina in their particular format and um, show you know what we did over the over the past couple of weeks um what was successful what wasn't and then a demonstration of the web app we've put together as well and then the certificates and whatnot go out then um from a list I've compiled uh, so yeah two weeks left um I mean of course if we need more. We need more, but um, yeah, about two weeks should should do it because Oasis has already made a start on the web application. So yeah, we should we should be able to meet that meet that particular time frame. So yeah, that's about about it. Um, has anyone got anything else that they'd like to share at all before we call it quits? I've got a few things to attend in work. You see. If not, cool. Um, any questions or anything about the, the next two weeks, just drop it in the Slack channel and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, thanks for everyone coming today and I will see you soon.